Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is video number three in this sampler series that we have going. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a detour from what I normally do where we talk about making sequencers that use signals and just talk a little bit about how to control this thing with MIDI. It occurred to me after I made the last video that before we dive into Gen, before we dive into MC and all these things, I should probably tell you guys how to play this sampler with MIDI. So let's do it. All right. So typically, if you are playing an instrument with MIDI, you're going to use MIDI notes. So there's two ways that we can get these. Number one is to just use a MIDI in object and then pass that into a MIDI parse. And now when you have MIDI coming in, so I have a push over here. I'm just going to tell it to look at the push and then I'm going to send MIDI notes and you can see those coming in. So we have the MIDI number and the velocity. The other thing that you can do, which we could do in this case, is just use the note in object, which is just for uh, MIDI note. So we don't have to do MIDI into MIDI parse. We just have one, um, one object. And it uses separate outlets. So we're going to get the note and the velocity and the channel separately. Um, so let's do that. And to set things up, let's have a, the ability for you to select which controller you're using. So I'm going to add a MIDI info object. And we're going to bang that on load. And in fact, I want, rather than to bang it, I actually want to send it this message controllers, which is going to get it to tell us what the MIDI input devices are on our machine. And if I print the result of that, you can see we get messages that are tailor-made. I think I mentioned maybe in the last video that sometimes objects will output messages that are made exactly for a U menu, and this is exactly that situation. So now we have those MIDI devices in the U menu, and then I can just connect that to the node in object. So I'm just going to encapsulate this and call it MIDI init. MIDI init. Great. Okay, cool. So now I'm getting MIDI in, and let's visualize. So we have the note and we have the velocity. I'm not going to worry about the channel. If you want, you can have, you know, a little bit of patching that makes it so that it only listens to a given, a specific MIDI channel. But in this case, we're just going to use Omni. And this is pretty straightforward. So we're going to take the note and we're going to pass it into the, um, into the signal here that we're using to generate a MIDI note event. I'm going to get rid of this case slider. We're just going through rtt.scala. By the way, if you don't have the Rhythm and Time Toolkit package, you will need to install it for this package or for this patch to work, uh, which you can do over here in the package manager. Um, so we'll patch that MIDI note in there, and then um, we will generate a click into the sampler by just having a bang that occurs actually not when we get the note value, but rather when we get a non-zero uh, velocity. Because when the, when I when I press and hold the key, I will get some non-zero value, and then when I release the key, which I did just now, I get zero. So if I get a non-zero value, um, then this will give me one, and so then I can just say sell one to receive ones, and then trigger a bang. So now I'm triggering that sound, and I'm also playing it at different pitches. Another way that we can actually achieve a similar thing is to use a strip note object, which is pretty cool. Basically, it will just take the note and the velocity, and then it will only uh, output the note on velocity. So we can literally just do this. Because it's just going to take out the note off of this, which is kind of cool. Um, now, this version uses this kind of static envelope where it doesn't matter how long we hold the key down for. Actually, let me add these integer boxes back in over here so that you can actually see what's going on. So the note, come on. 
and the velocity. I'm holding it, but it's it's already over because in this case we're just triggering a th a one second envelope and that's it. So uh, to 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 do things a different way, we kind of need to have a different approach to our envelope. And the way that I think that we should do it is with live at EDSR. And I'm going to go to the help patch for this, and I'm just going to grab this little snippet, which includes not only live.adsr, but also live ADSR tilde or ADSR UI. So we can then send, we can, you know, create nice ADSR shaped attack decay sustain release shaped envelopes. And let's go back over to this whole patch actually and see what is how does signal mode work? Yes, it seems that perhaps this is a kind of bit of a confusing help patch. I want to say like it's a little confusing. Anyway, um, really, all we care about is not signal control, but just sending in um, velocity values. And if the velocity values are non-zero, then we'll start the envelope. And if the velocity value is zero, then the envelope is uh, considered to be end, you know, or the, the node is considered to be over and the release phase will begin. And the value that we send in actually sets the amplitude of that uh, on a scale from zero to one. So we want to we want to divide the velocity value by 127. So now if I twiggle this, it should work, I believe. Oh, I'm clicking a I'm clicking a button rather than my MIDI controller. Okay, MIDI, and then that way I can get different envelopes. Yeah, so that is MIDI control of this sampler. In the next videos, we're going to go back to regularly scheduled programming in which we mainly work with sequencers as a source of control. But I felt that it would be rude to all of you not to. Um, you know, not to show a little MIDI control so that if you are a keyboardist or some other type of musician who can actually trigger things, that you know how to do that. Okay, thanks. See you next time.